Hi, this is Kirk, the Bariatric Carnivore. This is part five in a five-part series on how to kick ass and really succeed at bariatric surgery. Now we've talked about the prep work, uh, healing in that first month, what you have to do when you're on your own, some of the downsides that happen after bariatric surgery and how to overcome them. Now let's talk about your path forward and where you're going to go now that you've had bariatric surgery and where you're trying to get yourself from somebody who's just there to lose weight, but how to become the healthiest person that you can be. And what I discovered is I needed to go low carb. That's what's worked for me to make me healthy. What happens to a lot of bariatric patients after about year three is they start to see weight come back on. Slowly but surely, it seems to creep back on, and it's akin to what happened during the Biggest Loser study, which was a fascinating study. These are people that were on the TV show that lost an incredible amount of weight, mainly through starvation and a lot of heavy exercise. And many of them kept up, you know, when they studied them, they showed you know, with absolute certainty that they were doing still a ridiculous amount of exercise and that they were still keeping close to their original diets. But their basal metabolism had slowed down so much that they couldn't keep the weight off. And many of those contestants regained all the weight that they had had when, the, when they were on the show. And some of them had actually were heavier than when they'd originally started. And that is after some really intense work. That's a warning sign to a lot of us because that ha seems to happen to us too. Why it happens exactly, we're not completely sure. We blame it on what's called the basal metabolic rate, that our metabolism seems to slow down after semi-starvation. And frankly, you know, you're, unless you eat a really good diet, you're going to be semi-starving yourself. And if you're losing weight because of bariatric surgery through starvation and you're eating processed food and regular crap and you're eating just what you ate before you had the surgery, except less of it, you're going to slow down your metabolism. And as a result, the weight is going to slowly start creeping back in unless you increase the amount of exercise or reduce the amount of food. One way around this, I found, is by going keto or carnivore. So the nice thing about going keto and carnivore is you can pretty much eat all you want, but you're not feeding the insulin. And there's two different models for how to lose weight. One of them is insulin resistance and the other one is the conventional model, which is calories in, calories out. I happen to think, and I think the evidence shows that really putting on weight is a matter of hormones, particularly the hormone insulin. Insulin has a peculiar ability to put fat in the fat cells. That you know, it's a vital nutrient. It's a vital hormone. You need it. It's what monitors and keeps our glucose in check. But it tends to make us fatter. That's you know, if you notice that you know, a type one diabetic is somebody who cannot produce insulin, and it's a wasting disease. They rapidly lose weight and die because their body cannot create fat. And if you have zero insulin, frankly, you're just not going to have any fat at all on your entire body. Too much insulin and your body starts to gain weight rather rapidly. So the question is, how do you reduce the amount of insulin through diet? Don't give it carbs. Carbohydrates is what increases insulin. So if you eat a diet void of carbohydrates, your body doesn't produce a great deal of insulin and you lose weight rather naturally. And that's what's worked very well for me and for many other people. That once, you know, the amount of carbohydrates your body needs in order to live is zero. You do not need carbohydrates to live. So once you realize that, you reduce the amount of carbohydrates. If you keep them down to 20 or so every single day, and I'm not talking about 20 carbs from potato chips or bread, but 20 from leafy green vegetables and stuff like that because all vegetables contain carbohydrates. Uh, if you keep it down to about 20 grams a day, you'll be in a state of ketosis and your insulin level is going to be relatively low. And as a result, you're not going to put on a lot of fat. So yeah, I really recommend that 
when you begin your bariatric journey, when you finish the surgery, when you've done the healing, switch over to a keto or maybe a carnivore diet where you're just eating mostly meat, a little bit of vegetable, uh, butter, eggs, and that's it. Now that can be a quite a, a very delicious lifestyle. And that's what I've been doing now for the last three years. And I keep losing weight. I keep getting stronger and healthier. And most importantly, it's reversed and gotten rid of my metabolic syndrome. Remember I told you at the beginning of this journey, the reason why I had bariatric surgery is my doctor told me, my eye doc told me I had macular degeneration, that she was gonna have to start giving me injections in the back of my eyes or I was gonna be blind. My only solution that she told me was to lose weight. What I wish she had told me was, what you need to do is get rid of your metabolic syndrome and get your metabolism and get your bloods and your insulin levels under control because you're pre-diabetic. If she had told me that, I would have looked up something very differently than just losing weight. But she didn't. She doesn't. Un she still doesn't understand metabolic syndrome. She's not. Still doesn't understand what pre-diabetes is even to this day even if I've tried to tell her four or five times that the only reason why my eyes have gotten better is because I've gotten rid of the carbs but you know neither here nor there but if you want to get rid of your metabolic syndrome and, and metabolic syndrome is basically a description of five key symptoms is your blood pressure high do you have a big waist uh, What's your HDL level? What's your triglyceride level? And what's your fasting glucose? And I've got a video, I'll put a link below on how to diagnose metabolic syndrome. And if you've got three out of the five, you've got metabolic syndrome, which means you're pre-diabetic. So if you want to get rid of that, if you want to be healthy, then you need to make dietary changes, mostly getting rid of the processed foods, particularly wheat. Get rid of uh, vegetable oils. And sugar. If you get rid of those three things, unfortunately what that means is you're not going to be able to eat any processed food. You'll only be eating whole foods because frankly everything contains those ingredients. If it's got a food label on it, it's got vegetable oil in it, it's probably got wheat in it and grains, and it's probably got sugar added to it. So you're going to have to get rid of those. But when you get rid of those and you start getting back to the way nature intended you to eat, you're gonna be healthier. And that's the goal, isn't it? I mean, you're not losing weight just to lose weight. If you wanted to lose weight just to lose weight, you could just sit around and eat, I don't know, rice cakes all day on the couch and you'll turn into a, an amorphous blob, but you'll lose weight. But you'll also lose muscle and you'll lose your health. We want you to be stronger, we want you to be healthier. We want you to be able to lose that loose skin. And the way you do that is through eating quality food. So I hope you know, you've enjoyed this journey for how to kick ass in bariatric surgery, how to think about this process and to change your diet to make you healthier and stronger. If you like this message, please hit the like button on this video. Subscribe to the channel. That helps the algorithm know that other people are liking this and they will let more people know about it. Put a comment down below if you've gone through bariatric surgery, what's your experience been? And have you tried, have you switched to a carnivore diet or a ketogenic diet after surgery and how that worked for you too? So let other people know, share your experiences. In this journey toward good health, you know, we're all alone in this fight. But thankfully, we can all be alone in this together if we all share our information and look after one another. This is Kirk, the Bariatric Carnivore. This is it for this series. Be back next week with another series of messages.